My name is Becca Swift, and I'm doing my contribution project on Jane Edna Hunter. She is considered one of the most influential African-American social activists of the early to mid-20th century. She was born on September 30, 13, 1882 on the Woodburn Farm in South Carolina. Her mother, Harriet Milner, was a daughter of freed slaves. Her father, Edward Harris, was the son of a slave woman and plantation overseer. Hunter's parents were tenant farmers on the Woodburn Farm. Her father died when she was just 10 years old due to an illness. Being three quarters black, Hunter was fairly light skinned and related to her father's side more than her mother's. It wasn't until she was in her teens that she fully embraced being a black woman. Jane was taught to read and write by the daughter of her employer where she did housework. She later went to school at Ferguson College and graduated in 1896. After graduating, her mom forced her to marry Edward Hunter, a man who was 40 years, old, 40 years older than her. The marriage ended a year later, and she never married again. Jane then completed her nursing training at the Hampton College in Virginia. In 1905, Hunter moved to Cleveland, Ohio. She attended the Marshall Law School and received her law degree and passed the Ohio Bar Exam in 1925. She faced many difficulties upon arriving in Cleveland. Due to segregation laws, Hunter couldn't find housing or professional work. Her first home was a brothel. After finding housing and a decent nursing job, she experienced yet another difficulty. In 1910, Jane's mother died and she became very depressed. In an effort to honor her mother, distract herself from the pain, and make better housing opportunities for young women like her, Hunter decided to take action. She convinced some of her female friends to save a nickel a week and say a prayer. She also received contributions from businessmen and philanthropists such as John Rockefeller. With this money, Hunter opened the Working Girls Home Association. The association was a boarding home for women. Its purpose was to build a safe housing environment for the homeless, unprotected, newly arriving African American women and working women. A lot of African American women were moving to Cleveland from the South during the Great Migration. The Working Girls Home Association was later renamed the Phyllis Wheatley Association in honor of the late 18th century Boston slate. The association kept growing in size and they had to keep relocating. In 1919, they purchased a building that could house 75 people. They also purchased a building attached to provide social and educational activities and the Stevens School of Music. The Phyllis Wheatley Association, or PWA, served as a community center where segregated blacks could enjoy cultural and social events together. It was the first institution designed to meet the needs of African American migrants. By 1927, it became the largest private African American social services agency in Cleveland. Phyllis Wheatley, the African American slave from Boston, was considered one of the best known poets in pre 19th century America. She was the first published African American female poet. Phyllis was sold into slavery at seven years old and sent to America. Her masters taught her to read and write and supported her poetry. Dr. Rhonda Robinson Thomas, an English professor at Clemson University, became fascinated with Jane Hunter's story. Dr. Thomas read A Nickel and a Prayer and used it in her English class and began to do more research on Hunter. Together with the Dead Horse Productions team, they began to produce a documentary on Hunter's life. Hunter wrote an autobiography called Nickel and a Prayer. The title is based off of her idea for her friends to save a nickel per week and make a prayer. Through this, it helped her fund the Phyllis Wheatley Association. The book was published in 1940. The book focuses on Hunter's rough childhood, living on the plantation, her school years, being married, and her role as an activist. Hunter shares her struggles that she experienced throughout her life through the book. There have been four editions total that have been published, two of which she did when she was still alive. Jane Hunter made many contributions to society. She is considered one of the most prominent black activists in the development of social services to African American women in the early 1900s. Hunter founded the Phyllis Wheatley Association and the Phyllis Wheatley Foundation Scholarship. 
The foundation later established the Jane Edna Hunter Scholarship Fund in her honor. Hunter founded the Lemon Civic League of Cleveland in 1943 and was vice president and an executive member of the National Association of Colored Women. She was a nominee for the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People's Spring Iron Medal and was a member of the NAACP. Hunter was also inducted into Ohio's Hall of Fame. The Cuyahoga Department of Children and Family Services named their main building after her. She held honorary degrees from Allen University, Fisk University, Central State University, and the Tuskegee Institute. Kane Hunter left the Phyllis Wheatley Association until she retired in 1946. She lived in a nursing home from the 1960s until her death in 1971 at 89 years old. Hunter was an inspirational woman who dedicated her life to making the lives of other similar women facing adversities a little bit easier. This contributions project really showed me how little information there is for such an inspiring and remarkable woman. Hunter was a role model for young African American women during her time and can still be considered a role model to this day. I'm surprised to not have heard or learned about her before or many of the other women in the previous presentation. With as many contributions to society that she made, we should be learning about her in our general history classes. These women faced many struggles, but used that to their advantage to gain passion to help other women similar to them.